Hello, I'm Carl Brown. Welcome to Grown Pains, taking your business to the next level. Today's guest is Janice Liggins, Chief Steward for Corporate Resource Solutions, or CORE. CORE provides corporate infrastructure support services that help strengthen internal operations for small businesses. Welcome, Janice, and thank you for being on Grown Pains. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for inviting me. Good to be here. Great, great. So how did you get into business and what does CORE do? Well, I was working with um, a large company and I decided that um, I saw many smaller companies uh, needing services and needing supports, but I had no way to get those supports. And so it was the president trying to do a little bit of everything. And what I did is I was actually supporting um, some of those small businesses as a result of me being with that larger company. And so I started working as an independent and supporting those various companies with marketing. And okay. the marketing then went on to delivering other services because I just saw the need was so great. Mainly, um, most presidents of a company, regardless as to the nature of that company, they go in business to provide a particular service or particular product. But as the business grows, the needs in the company continue to grow, That's such right. as human resource, such as finance, such as marketing. And those services draw the president's attention away from why they went in the business from the beginning. So what we do is bring services to them by the slice so they don't have to staff up too early and enable them to just get the services they need <coughs> while they are still functioning, I'm sorry, <coughs> excuse me, while they're beginning to grow and expand. Okay. So in, when you talk about infrastructure, are we talking about human resources or finance or, or all of that? All of the above. Okay. If they, for example, are an IT company, every company, regardless as to the nature of the services or product they provide, every company basically follows the same footprint. They need HR support. They need accounting support, they need marketing support, they need all of the above. Okay. And they're going to have to bring someone in at some point to handle those, or the president is going to burn out. That's not possible. So let's, let's focus on HR for a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm one person deep. I'm the president. I'm doing everything. And then I decide to bring somebody else on. What, how would you caution me to do that? Well, first, make sure financially that you have sufficient resources already in the bank to carry that payroll. So whether it's one or two or 10, make sure that you have sufficient resources, and I'd say at least 90 days worth, okay. to be able to carry that, um, that payroll um, until your contract, I assume you have a contract that can support right. that person. Okay. Um, but two, you wanna make sure you do check that person out um, carefully before you bring them on. You, it's easy to hire, it's a lot more difficult to fire. So you wanna really do a good job in doing your due diligence <clears throat> and bringing that person on. And I think that um, a lot of small businesses will hire their, their sister or their, their cousin just because the cousin has a heart to help. And that's nice that they do, but you really want somebody who can help you in your business, right. that right. has the credentials, the background to really help you get to the next level. Let's focus on that because I want to make sure that folks that are watching the show understand that it's critical to hire the right person. It is. You it know? is. And that goes um, not only in their uh, exper experience and expertise, but it goes in, in personality and whether they, they can buy into your vision and support your vision. All of that factors in to a good fit. Okay, so... Let's talk about that whole, the ugly side, determination side. A lot of folks struggle with that because they don't want to fire someone even though they're doing their business harm. Mm. What do you tell them in that case? You have to be able to make the tough decisions. You have to be able to make the tough decisions. And uh, you want to make sure, though, if you are moving in the direction of wanting to let someone go, that it's well documented. You want to give them a chance. Uh, make sure that they are coached on their performance, things that they need to do, things that they need to prove on, uh, improve on. And you want to document that. 
not just have a conversation, you actually want to document that. So if they are not performing well, th it should not be a surprise to them. You should have had a conversation with them and just let them know this is the area that we need to work on. And then give them an opportunity to improve. Have another follow-up evaluation. And if things continue not to improve, then you, are, you have just cause um, to let them go. Yeah, I was watching the show. They talked about um, <clears throat> what to do in that case. And they, the, the motto of the guy was, fire fast, hire slow. Yes. <laughs> well, but still, you have to be careful about that hot firing because they could come back at you. Um, they could come back. And, you know, another thing in the HR um, arena you want to make sure of is that they are, um, whether you consider them a 1099 uh, right. supporter or a W-2 employee, there's a big difference. And the IRS has a list of factors that um, actually they have a test that you have to meet right, with a list right. of factors. And a um, couple different scenarios. There was an, a young lady who worked for a construction company for seven years as a, as a 1099. Okay. But they had her come to the same office, sit at the same desk, perform the same services all that time. She wanted to be a 1099, but what happened is at the end, they fired her without warning. And she needed, she needed income, so she filed for unemployment. And they fought it, saying that she didn't get unemployment because she was a 1099. But right. she said, I've been at the same desk all this time. And she won. Oh, of course she won. She won. And so they did have to pay her unemployment. But even more important is uh, there, was a, there was a company that we were called in to try to help provide some analysis to. There was something going on in his HR. And there were several people qu quitting repeatedly. And they were upset and, and causing chaos in the office. Well, when we got there, we did uh, a full assessment of his HR um, office, an audit. We actually did a full audit. And we found that when we first went there, the first conversation, he says, well, my staff this and my staff that. And I said, well, when you're saying staff, are they 1099 or are they W-2? And he said, they're 1099. <laughs> well, that was the first clue. Right. And I told him. Red right, flag. <laughs> right then. If they are 1099, don't use the word staff. Staff implies employee. So say team, my team, if they're 1099. And as we went <clears throat> on doing the audit, we found that he was giving them offer letters as if they were employees, and he was telling them their salary as if they were employees, and who they reported to as if they were employees. But when it came to them getting paid, he treated them like a 1099. He treated them worse than a 1099. He told them, you have to wait till we get our money. And oh, so, so he was sending mixed signals. He was, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we, so we had to really establish policies and procedures for him um, just to make sure that he did not, because he could, he could have gotten himself into some really big trouble. So I'm thankful that we were able to get in and do the audit before he actually got in trouble with IRS. Because the IRS has sent down new rules and regulations on that 1099 W-2 yes. difference. Yes, it's a big and, difference. And they Excuse want me. you to know as an employer that if you control what the employee or person the, does, that's right. then they're an employee, that's W-2. Right. That's right. If they're a consultant, then they can come and go as they please and they provide reports or policies or research mm -hmm. or whatever it is then it could be a 1099, a 1099 because you don't control what they do and where they, where they go. You may say, I want this report on Friday at 5 o'clock, but Other where they that. do it, if it's at Starbucks or wherever, exactly. at their house or their office, it do doesn't matter. Exactly. So exactly. people are getting in trouble for that. And, and, and rightfully so, because if you want to say someone is an employee, then um, you have to provide all of the attributes that go along with that. Right. You know, to include withholding taxes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we've seen recently a lot of people getting in trouble for people, yes. not paying their not taxes. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So why is building an infrastructure of a business important? 
In order for you to keep up with all of the requirements of, this, of the government, actually the state and local government, federal government, you have to have someone else manning the store while you're out as the CEO delivering product or developing whatever it is that that CEO does. Someone has to be minding the store or you'll find that these um, requirements are going to come up unexpectedly, like you know, even filing the, um, all of the, the, the quarterly taxes. Somebody right. has to do that. Mm -hmm. So why is, you know, um, hiring a big deal in a small business? Because you need to have someone who can wear multiple hats is what I always advise people to do. You need to hire someone who is, can wear multiple hats because, and not hire that person unless you already have sufficient work to keep them busy. It's, it's expensive to hire it's, um, and they're going to get bored. They'll take your check. <laughs> They'll take your check for sure. And they will. But if you are not able to keep them productive and keep them engaged, they're going to get bored, and they may eventually leave. So that is another reason why I think that um, before you hire, look at outsourcing. Right. Look at outsourcing. If there's, <clears throat> I don't think you need an HR manager. Right. For example, you have to have over. I think over a hundred people before you need a full time. HR manager. You don't need to hire in certain positions. Even um, even as an assistant, uh, administrative type of, per of a person, make sure you have enough to keep that person busy and make sure that person can do more than one thing, okay. more than just administration. Well, we're about to go to break, okay. so when we come back, let's talk about business development. Okay. Stay tuned for more Growing Pains when we return. You have to have certain things in place, such as your, your collateral materials. Prince George's Community College isn't just a place that offers more than 200 academic, workforce development, and continuing education programs. It's the first step toward the career of your dreams. It's a community of people who want you to succeed. It's where degrees are earned and potential is realized. Apply and register today. Call 301-336-6000. Prince George's Community College, transforming lives. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult and speak up and do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Throw away money on wasted electricity. You're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero oír. Danny, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. <laughs> no! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. 
Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to Growing Pains. As we continue our discussion with Janice Liggins of CORE, Janice, before break, we were talking about or getting ready to discuss business development. Could you explain to our audience what that is? Well, the business development is the process of structuring and organizing for outreach. Okay. And when I say that, I mean, you have to have certain things in place, such as your, your collateral materials. Collateral materials meaning your business cards, your brochures, um, your processes for how you're going to actually go out and seek new clients and how you're going to actually um, promote your business, whether it's your website or whether it's going to be trade show. Um, materials. Business development is looking at this, the market okay. and what kind of things that you want to do, where should you go. So it's, it's really positioning the company to be able to do all of those things, to grow the business. It's putting all of those things in place within the company for the company to be able to go out and perform. Now let me ask you this, because I, I, when I'm out at trade shows, people always come up to me and they're marketing collateral sometimes they have uh, whiteouts oh. or scratch outs this is no longer our phone number this is the new number oh we don't have that uh, website anymore here's our new website and to me as a former contract administrator the one that was making the decisions on what vendors to pick to be on our team you look risky to me mm -hmm. And if you, you knew you were coming to this trade show, why didn't you change out your collateral? So, exactly. you know, can we speak on that? <laughs> well, it's, it's essential to put the best foot forward. And unless you're ready to play, you don't play in the heavyweight boxing ring unless you're ready. You know, if you're lightweight, then you have to play in a lightweight ring. And so with business, there are certain uh, segments and markets that uh, you can test the waters with, if you will. So scratch out might be okay in certain markets, but if you're trying to get into um, bigger contract markets where the government, whether it's state, local, or federal, and even commercial, even the larger commercial companies, you have to have your game together. And I think you have to be prepared um, and know that scratch out, white out is not acceptable. Exactly. It's just not. And um, even with the exhibit, if they they may sign up, especially if the um, if there's a uh, free exhibit, they may mm -hmm. show up and all they have is a typed up flyer that they just <laughs> you know use Microsoft Word to print off real quick. That's not sufficient. That is not just not all. sufficient. So you, I think those kinds of things. But if they are in business, that's not if they're making widgets, then the marketing and the collateral development that's not their forte. So they're not necessarily to be blamed for it, but they're blamed for not going to get the person who could help them to get it together. Right, to make them look good. To make them look you good. You have to look good out there. And if you're a small business, you have to be behind the curtain, behind the closed door. You have to be or look bigger than you actually are. Exactly. To attract that clientele that you ultimately want to get to. Exactly. So as an instructor for the Center for Minority Business Development Accelerator Program and a, and a consultant, I should say, what are some of the things that you've seen with our program? Well, there was one organization um, who had 
tremendous past performance. I was very impressed with the types of contracts that he had already had. Um, and if you spoke with him, he could just rattle them off one after the other. But he had not one brochure that mm -hmm. he could show you what he did. He didn't have any collateral materials at all. He did have a business card, but that was all he had. And he, and he had hundreds and hundreds of pictures, nice pictures that he had taken, but they were on his computer. Uh -huh. And so <clears throat> we worked with him to actually develop. I, I pretty much interviewed him, pulled stuff out of his head mm -hmm. for his past performance, because I didn't have anything to go by except his, his memory. But we created the draft of, of a brochure with, con we created the content, if you will, for a draft brochure with all of the pictures, using pictures he already had. He just was so used to talking uh, about what he did that he had never thought to put together a brochure. So I thought he did good work, but he needed to help, he needed something that could speak for him when he was not there to speak That's for himself. Right. That's right. You got to have that brochure, yes. you got to have that capability statement, and yes. you have to have that business card. Yes. What we do at the center is what we call the starter package with all of the accelerated participants. We give them a logo, business card, and a capability statement. Anything outside of that, they should pay for it themselves, mm -hmm. but we give them that starter package because we know that that is critical to go out there and hunt and fish and go out and, and talk to the federal government if that's your client, state and local or the commercial sector. And primarily we try to focus them on the National Harbor development and with the Peterson company. So There's a lot going on there. A lot going on yes, down there and yes. we try to position them for that. Yes. So let's talk about when a small business should engage a company like yours to help them with their business development. Well, as soon as they are ready to, if they're already doing work, I don't ever want to go out to help a company get the first contract. Okay. I think that president should have enough wherewithal to get convince someone uh, to give him a, a project. Right. But we can, t from the beginning, we can work with them. It's, it's better if they've already had some revenue, they've already got a stream, income stream, and, and, and an employee or two. Mm -hmm. But we can start with them, um, I think, re relatively small to help them grow and expand and help point them in the direction strategically that they may want to go in. When I say strategically, and I'm talking about the strategic uh, planning here, <coughs> excuse me, if they are looking at the entire market, nationally and at the local level and industry-wise, the strategic planning should tie in all of those segments because that tells you if you know that you are, um, there's a company, for example, this is back in the day, they were in the technology field, and we know technology changes rapidly. Uh, <laughs> Daily. <laughs> yes, a, and a large company bought a smaller company that was doing great things, uh, but the larger company failed to look at the big picture what's okay. going on in the industry to see what is coming. And so sh within a year of buying that company, and they paid millions <coughs> for this company, um, they ended up folding. Wow. Because the industry changed, and what that company had was no longer viable. Okay. Because, a whole, you know, there was a, a whole new product on the market that, um, that changed everything. And this was back in the word processing days to the PC days. And oh. so, you know, the, the, the industry just changed. So. Uh, Raytheon Data Systems was the company, and they folded the whole division. Mm. So when we work with companies, uh, we look at it from a strategic perspective, meaning um, across the company, what kind of market, what kind of segment would be good for you to participate in? What's coming on the horizon that the president may not have even thought about or considered, and that could be good that he may want to get into? And then what's coming on the horizon that's a warning that he, right. needs, to, he needs to make a, a course correction. That's right. Because now that's this right. new thing is on the horizon and it could negatively impact. So he needs to make some adjustments to prepare and brace for that. So to me, that all is 
under the umbrella of the strategic planning that really then helps with the business development okay. and the marketing. I worked with a company once that had three operating divisions and the strategic planning was across the board for the corporate entity looking at the industry, looking at the market, but then those three different operating divisions needed work. Mm -hmm. So the, some of the work that came in at the corporate level uh, would automatically get assigned to one of those divisions. Okay. But strategically, we also looked at specific opportunities just for each division. Each division handled different types of work. So we would look for work that was specific to each division, but then we would also look at um, industry-wide, what's coming? What should they focus on? And several times the company shifted direction to be now, able to tap. Where, where would someone <laughs> get that kind of information, that intelligence that you're talking about? That's through market research. Okay. And that's part of the service that we offer. That all comes through market research. That all comes through um, knowing where to look uh, for things that are coming. And several times, you know, we've had companies actually shift direction to take advantage of a new opportunity coming or a new um, uh, model coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. a, a trend that's a coming new trend into that is, And so we have them okay. shift to take advantage of the trend or shift again to brace from a negative shift. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're about to end this, this show. Okay. So what kind of pearls of wisdom would you leave the small business owner who is, you know, trying to go to that next level or that person that that is looking at becoming an entrepreneur but really hasn't made up their mind yet, what can you tell them? What, what insight can you give them? I think every entrepreneur has to have a certain passion for whatever it is they're going to do. If you're not passionate about it, um, then it'll be just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, but if you're passionate about it, then put, commit the resources to it, commit the time and the energy to it, and be selective on who you have to join you, whether it's whether it's a 1099 person right. or a W-2 person, be clear about that, but make sure they bring the kind of talent and skills that are going to help you and not have you having a bleeding heart because you like them and they're nice, but right. be very strategic even about who you bring to the table to help you. All right. Well, Janice, thank you so much thank for being you. on the show. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you next time as we continue to help you take your business to the next level. To find out more information about the CMBD Accelerator Program, call us at 301-583-5205 or visit our website at www.cmbd.biz. <laughs>